Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing week 43 of my 2019 reads. This week I managed to only finish one book, uh, but there's a reason and I'll talk about it. So the book that I finished this week was The Overstory by Richard Powers. This is a book that I have been buddy reading for the past few weeks with Eva from Eva Strange, who I will link below, and this week we wrapped it up. Um, this book is something that is actually very well received. It won the Pulitzer Prize, and many, many people are big fans of it. Uh, it didn't work so well for me, and it really didn't work for Eva, so I assume she'll have a video out talking about that soon. It'll be very interesting to watch. Uh, when this book started, I was actually fairly engaged in it. I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought that the prose was good, and I fell into the story in the beginning. So the storyline is sort of a patchwork quilt where there are something like eight different people, and each of them has some sort of special connection to trees. Um, later, the story comes together, and they kind of work in various ways in groups to protect trees and try to, you know, uh, improve the way that humans treat trees. So I definitely liked the beginning of the book where we were getting the backstory of all these characters, but the further into the book we went, the less it worked for me. And there's quite a few reasons why. So the first reason is that while I definitely am 100% behind the message of the book that trees are important and that humans ought to care more about what happens to trees, especially because what happens to them will affect us, um, I, I didn't necessarily like the way that that message was presented in this book. It felt very proselytizing, very missionary, and very condescending in a lot of the ways that it was said. Um, there's even a bit in the book where the author talks about fiction versus nonfiction and how if only there were a fiction book that were about flawed characters that had the message that we should, you know, care about the earth, then maybe people would actually care. And so I think that the author sort of sees himself as this savior of humanity through his fiction, and that felt very arrogant to me. Um, the message is also repeated over and over and over again in the book. It is sort of something that is explicitly stated, as well as the point of every single character line. And so it just felt so repetitive, and like you were being hit over the head with it again and again, and I got very tired of that. Um, I almost DNF'd this book, as in I should have DNF'd this book, truthfully. However, because I was reading it with Ava, I wanted to finish it. Uh, it was a slog, though, to get through the end because of that repetition, as well as some other issues. So in this book, there's all of these different characters. And in the beginning, I was actually pleasantly surprised because so many of them face different disabilities. Given that this month I'm focusing on disability awareness, I thought that is so cool. I never see authors who have multiple different types of uh, disabilities for their characters. However, I realized as we went further in the book and I discussed it with Ava and understood what was going on, that rather than really giving representation to people with disabilities, in fact, I felt that this book in many ways was exploiting and fetishizing disability. So in the book, these characters are all in a sense isolated from the rest of humanity due to their disability, and that connects them more with nature. And it just felt like the characters were being used rather than represented. And that got very frustrating the further I went in the book, especially things like um, there was a character who's schizophrenic, and she is sort of portrayed as being very spiritual and is able to actually see the spirits of the trees and talk to them. And I had just finished reading uh, The Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Weijin Wong, where she talks about how in media, often people with schizophrenia are portrayed either as uh, possessed by demons, like in The Exorcist, or as these spiritual leaders and how, you know, it, it separates them from sort of their humanity. And I felt like each of the characters in some way, their disability was made less to represent them and more to talk about the failings of humanity and how um, normal humans couldn't possibly care about the earth. It's, it, it's very problematic. I don't have a disability, so I can't speak to this, but 
I felt very uncomfortable with the way that it happened. Also, the representation of women was problematic, I felt. There was one character who's, um, <laughs> Ava described her as this manic pixie dream, and that definitely fit. Uh, like, everybody's in love with her, and she's so beautiful, and she's so in tune with nature. It was just a little bit much. There is um, an indigenous Alaskan character who pops up at the very end, and again, that stereotypical, oh, I knew all along, my people knew all along about nature. And it just felt like stereotypes. Uh, even the way that women were treated, where um, there's one character who is very much a non-conforming woman. She wants her freedom. She wants her independence. She's not content to be owned. She refuses to follow the strictures of you know traditional marriage. She uh, has relationships outside of it. All of these sorts of things. And in the end, she is reformed, where she becomes a caregiver instead, who gives up her wild ways and finds a better purpose, bigger purpose in caring for others and um, staying at home and simply watching the trees grow. And that really bothered me. So a lot of the way that the characters were used bothered me. The way that the message was just really so prevalent in every single page. And I just found that towards the end, I was dreading picking up this book. It was going so slowly. I practically had tears of frustration rolling down my face, just so frustrated with trying to get through this book. So it was not for me. Um, and although I can see that people would like the message, I can see that Powers writing could be engaging for people who are okay with the repetitive nature of it or who don't see the issues with the characterization of people. Um, I, I was not a fan of this book and I would not recommend it. I gave it two out of five stars. I almost gave it one star, but I remember that at the beginning I actually was into it and it's not like I thought the writing was um, unreadable. It's, it's just that um, it was very tough for me to get through. And because of this book, I really didn't touch anything else this week, which is a little bit sad because there's a ton of other great books sitting on my TBR. So here's hoping that next week I will read books that mesh better with me and have a better reading experience. Uh, if anybody else has read this book, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Maybe I missed something or maybe it spoke to people in a different way. I'm not really sure, uh, but that was my reading week. <laughs>